part, I have no idea what part we're on. This is gonna be the last video of this little series, YouTube extravaganza, I have no idea what to call it, um, from putting my CB300F motor yeah, into my 2017 Honda Grom. Um, if you found this video randomly, uh, there's a playlist linked in the description uh, that has every video that I've ever done building this Grom from tearing it down to putting this motor in. So all the parts used linked in the description, uh, supported by Hard Racing and, and A Racer. So check them out. They're in the description. Um, this video probably going to take me a few few days maybe to record it, but there's really not much left to do on here. So I got the gas tank shroud on here, just sitting here for now, because we got to cut these the plastic. I don't know if you can see it. So obviously this isn't going to work. So we got to cut the plastic on this side. Obviously we got to cut the plastic on this side. This has not even come close. Um, we got to mount the headlight right here. I already got it um, swapped out. So this is that 12 volt light that we swapped in. Fits perfectly. I've already rewired the blinkers with adapters so they can plug into the harness. Um, last episode we got the gas tank on. I'm waiting for a air filter for the throttle body. And then we gotta put fluids in it. Once the fluids are in, we can start it up. Hopefully it runs. I've actually never heard this motor run before. When I bought the bike, it was already totaled. Um, all the wires were ripped out of the controls, so it might not even start, so who knows. Uh, oh, I gotta mount the bars too, as I'm looking at it. So let me mount this camera. I'm probably gonna show a little bit of me cutting, but once it's cut, the plastic shrouds, I'll show you what I cut and what it looks like now. Um, I'll have before after pictures on the screen if I remember what I'm editing. So, yeah, so let's get to it. I can do it. I can do it. Let's go. got it cut I mean, it's not perfect but it'll work when you cut it make sure you keep this piece this is the second mount for your plastics because since we can't mount the plastic anymore we can put this on the back side of the bolt so it looks like it's mounted you know deceive people but yeah so that is this side this side's got a little more space but you know what no one's gonna ever see it when it's plastics are on the bike so it's good enough so now I'm gonna mount my gas tank shroud. Um, I just, these two bolts, both sides, and then I'll do my bars. The bars are off because I have the DJ1 mount gauge, so I had to take that off to get the gas tank off, or gas tank shroud off, so. Bam, magic of editing. All installed, got the bars installed. Fresh stainless steel hardware. It's coming together. So we're now we're gonna mount the headlight. That's the 12 volt headlight all installed, fits perfect. So the signals for the factory Groms are three wire where the CB300F harness and I believe for the 250 harness and 300 harness are two wire. So here's our two wires, here's our headlight. Um, so what I did was modified the signals and there's three wires coming out of it. There's going to be a orange green and orange with white stripe 
and then a blue, blue with white stripe, and green. Um, so the ones with the stripes, we're not going to be using. As you can see, it's capped off. The camera's not really that great. And then I just added bullet connectors to the ends of the green and blue and the ends of the green and orange. And that will plug into there. Reason for this is this bike doesn't have, its DRLs are dimmed signals where Groms are bright all the time. So that's how that we're gonna wire that in. We're also gonna wire in uh, a CBR 300 uh, relay. So the relays for this, the harness on this bike for the CB is a nine pin relay, which they don't make nine pin LED flasher relays. So TST made this two pin adapter which will plug in alongside your factory relay, which is under the tank on the other side. Hopefully, and now I'm just thinking of it, I can get to it with the tank on there. I should be able to. So let's get the headlight mounted up and the signals wired. When doing this, your orange is your left blinker and your blue is your right blinker. Just kind of want to cram all this wiring in here and put the headlight on. Headlights in. Next thing we're gonna do is the relay. So this is the TST flasher relay for the CBR 300R motorcycle. Obviously this will fit for the 300F, it will work for the 250. Um, so we're gonna take off the factory relay. So there's gonna be two relays here. One of them has two relays underneath like this one and this is a single one. This one will be your flasher relay. They'll be removing and depending on how you do your harness, yours might be in a different location. Mine are conveniently right here. Um, so we're going to remove this off. We're going to take some pins out of here, repin it, and then plug the pins from the relay from TST into this harness. It's super easy. I'll link TST's video in the description because their video is really good on how to do this. But basically we're going to be taking the gray wire and the black wire from this harness, plugging it into the TST one. Super easy, so let's get doing that. So the gray wire will go to the white wire on the TST. They include heat shrink. So just plug it into the white wire, like that. Slide the heat shrink tubing over it. Now we're going to do the same, the black wire on the other side of the green wire. Take your black wire from your TST relay, plug that into there. Take your heat shrink tubing over the top. So now we're going to take the female end, the last part of the TST relay. The part that you push down will have a little pin sticking out. That's going to go where you, uh, where you um, pinch to get it out to begin with. So just make sure you put it back in the same way. You'll hear it click, just like that. Relay is installed. Put your factory relay back on. Like that. We're going to zip tie these back up under here. This is flipped inside out. We can put this back. I'll zip tie this here. So now that that's kind of zip tied right now, um, next you want to take this gray cap off. Um, you can use a little tiny screwdriver and you want to adjust the speed. So that little blue thing there, and it's got a little area for a little flathead. You spin that left to right, it'll adjust your speed 
and how you want your blinkers to blink. And this is what it looks like. I have it adjusted to where I like it for now. So it's hard to tell on camera, but on the Groms, it, since it's three wire, you have blinker, daylight, running lights, and parking. Uh, so when you have your blinker on, it blinks completely off and on, off and on. On the CBs and the CBRs, there's only two wires, and the parking light and running light are, are the same wire. So the running light, as you can see on this side, is dimmer. With the blinker, it's brighter. I, I, and in my state, I can have white blinkers, so I don't know if I'm going to leave them white or I'll put ambers on, but that's what they look like. So that's with just the running lights on, so that's not bad. Not bad. And once you get that on, once you adjust this, um, you can just slide this cover back on. There's a little groove right there. That's where the board slides into, so make sure you do it, it fits that way. And then you just zip tie this up and out of the way. I'm actually going to zip tie it this way so water doesn't get up inside the relay. It'll, the gray plastic will protect it. So the next step, we're getting towards the end here, is we're going to install a coolant reservoir. Now if you have a full bike that you're parting out to do this, you'll have the factory one, which I have the factory one. I'm not going to use it, it's just too big. Um, this is the Motion Pro reservoir tank. I mean it's the size, it's, it's the size of a soda can. It's hard to show the size of it, but we're going to use that and it's going to mount right up in here like this, in this area somewhere on the left side. Um, I'll have a link for this in the description. It was only like 20 bucks. You might even be able to find it at like Cycle Gear, who knows. But that's what we're going to use. And we're going to use uh, engine ice coolant. You can use whatever you want really. So let's get this mounted. So first thing we're going to do is run a hose from the nipple on the radiator right under the radiator cap. Slide it on. I'll probably throw a zip tie on it. And the trick to get that on is if you're in a cold garage like I am, a little heat gun, heat up the hose, it'll go on there much easier. Now we're going to run this to the other side. So I'm going to run it down under the throttle body and over. I'm going to zip tight here to keep it off the throttle body. Alright, now that the hose is run, um, so we got the reservoir. We're actually going to drill out the bottom. This is going to be our radiator fill. Um, so there's a little nipple here. We're just going to drill it out. Start with a small drill bit and go to a bigger size after. Make sure you shake out whatever shavings you get in there. So now that we got the hole drilled on the bottom nipple, so depending on how you mount this on the box, there's a few different ways you can run it. So we're going to be doing this one. So the radiator is going to go to the bottom and the drain is going to be from the top. Depending on how you run it, it may be different how you do it. I'm going to mount this probably right here. So this hose is going to go right up through here onto there. The drain, I'm going to have come out and tie into the fuel drains. So just take your zip ties. It comes with two zip ties if you want to use them. Or you can use your own, obviously. Okay, it comes with some clips. Instead of a zip tie, I did put one on the other side. Now for the drain, 
It comes with this rubber cap which goes on the top. The hose you cut off, just slip it through. You're going to slip it down inside and then put it on the top. It will seal. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it and zip tie it to my drain tubes right here. So the reservoir is mounted. I'm actually going to redo this drain. I'm going to run it back here and down just so if it does spew out I don't get any hot fluid on my leg, all over the engine, inside the plastics. Um, the next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to put some uh, fluid in here. So this, we're going to put in some Motul 7100. Um, this engine, the CB300F, takes 1. 1. 1.5 liters or 1.6 liters, and, it, and I'd use milliliters. I have a measuring thing, so 1.5, 1.6 liters, we're going to put in 15 to 1600 milliliters. I believe in a CBR 300R takes 1800 uh, milliliters, which, and 1.8 liters, which it's the same engine, as far as I know, so I don't really know. But this is a 300F, so that's what we're going to put in here. And the coolant, I believe, takes 2.7 liters. I may be wrong on that. I'll have the correct info in the description. So let's fill this up. chain and sprockets. Alrighty, it's been a while since I recorded the last clip. Um, I'm waiting for parts, and I believe the last thing we did was the chain, and I put the sprocket cover on off camera. Um, I'm just going to go over how I ran my A racer setup. It's it's literally plug and play. It's hard to mess up, but this is how I run it. Um, the instructions for A racer say differently. 
I say follow what I tell you here to run it the way I do. I've never had a problem, whereas the other way I've heard people have problems. Um, so I have the RC2, which, where's my box? RC2, uh, I originally started this build. A Racer sent me a Mini 5, Hard Racing and A Racer. Um, they upgraded me to an RC Super 2. So that's great, thank you A Racer. Um, so that's what we're gonna run here. RC2, the quick, the difference is compared to the Mini 5, the Mini 5, the best way I can explain it is a set it and forget it type ECU where the RC2, you can data log on the computer, you can do anything on the computer. It's like a proper standalone ECU you'd find in a car. You literally can do everything with it. Um, and the processing power is faster in this, or stronger or whatever. So it can just do everything faster. So I have the RC2 mounted in the factory location with the factory rubber for the ECU. Um, I know, ignore my wiring. I have so much wiring and electronics on this bike. I have a radar detector. I have a switched power source harness, um, all my LEDs. So your bike will not look this cluttered. I don't know if you can even see it on camera. You kind of can. Um, so I got the A-Racer RC2 ECU. That plugs into the four to one harness. Um, the single side obviously plugs into the A-Racer ECU. Um, then I got the blink module which plugs into one of the four on the harness. Um, the best way to mount blank is pretty much right here on the side of the gas tank. Um, you want it as close as your phone as possible. Not like you can mount it in the trunk here and it will still connect. I just prefer it on the gas tank because my phone will mount up here on the bars. Um, so that plugs into the four to one. And then the AF1 now Please, for the love of God, do not run A Racer without having this module. This is, in my opinion, required to run any A Racer ECU. Granted, you can use the RC2 and dyno tune it with a sniffer. This just makes life so much easier. So, this is plugged into the 4 to 1. Um, this module is plugged or wired directly to the battery. So, you can see here this big plug. Um, it comes two wires off. I have it wired to my 12 volt always on um, switch. I have so the relay harness I have in here is two switch power source and one all the time. I just have this run to here. No different than running this to the battery. I just have so much wired to the battery. It's a mess. Ignore it. Um, so that's that. I run the DJ1 gauge, which is awesome. It's I use it to display my uh, air fuel ratio if I'm using my phone for GPS. Um, that will just run and it simply plugs directly into the A Racer or AF1. Um, and then there's another plug here. Plug it in. Again, these two ends are opposite. You cannot mix them up. One is DG1 gauge and one is for your harness. I'll plug that in later. Um, this wire right here that goes from the AF1 comes down to the sensor. Um, this is where your wideband will plug in. Um, it's fairly common that the sensors that come with the AF1 go bad. Um, I'll have a link for this in the description. This is um, for a Volkswagen and it's off Amazon. It's like 40 bucks. I've had nothing but good luck with those. I highly recommend having one on hand. If your sensor goes bad, it's just so you don't have to wait. That's good to go. So this is where I run my wideband sensor plug. Um, later in a few minutes we'll be installing my exhaust that finally came and this is where our wideband will plug into so always have this wired usually on the right side of your bike makes it easy um, let's see what else did I do oh and I made this custom bracket so all this weight of the throttle body on an elbow on another elbow I didn't like it, it bounces around. So I just made a quick little aluminum bracket. You can see there's a zip tie there. My bolt on the other side that's welded to the frame fell out. So at some point I will have to re-tap this whole thing and weld a nut on the back. But for now it's zip tied. This bracket 
um, this is where the air box mounts and your radiator um, is solid this thing is it is not moving for now so good to go um, I got on AliExpress I don't know if you'll be able to see it a little uh, where is it CBR radiator guard pretty nice really does nothing but I'm trying to go over everything that I've kind of changed or modified or whatnot not really seeing anything else pretty much exactly how it's gonna be shifters on on um, I use the Grom shifter this is really close so I might chop it here and add like a two inch piece of metal welded on just to get this out to over here just so my foot can fit in there I just had to shave some of the rear set here to get this to fit pretty easy bolts right on yeah I think we're ready to put our plastics on oh and I don't know if I've mentioned this in any of my videos but there's a crank breather f hose that comes from the top of your engine please for the love of God remember to put a breather filter on it you don't want to run that open um, that's the f that's the rubber line if you remember you probably can't even see it um, it goes there's a on the bracket there's that notch that's where the hose goes so you can fit it through so I think everything's pretty set on this um, I can't remember everything I've gone it's literally been three weeks since I recorded I was waiting for my exhaust and now I forgot everything but I think we're gonna put the plastics on we should be good to go with the plastics all the wiring is done we can get this baby started uh, I'm gonna go through how I set up a racer now I know there's gonna be people that tell me there's no oh, you do this you do that this is how I do a racer how I set up every single bike I've used there's countless other ways you could do it either listen to my way or do it your own way I don't really care um, we're gonna I'm just gonna show you how I set it up in the process that I go through but let's get these plastics on. I'll have the little GoPro mounted somewhere in the garage. So we got all the plastics on, left and right side, new Corbin seat, plastics on this side. Uh, make note, you can see right here, I trimmed the bottom of this black part of your plastic. It just makes it so the plastics kind of suck in more and it fits the radiator. It's hard to get a camera shot of that but you literally just cut to the line or edge or whatever that plastic is I did that for both sides right there I kind of went a little too big on that one but no one's gonna see it um, another thing is um, after you trim your plastics I think I mentioned it when you're trimming that inner shroud back here um, so this bolt will bolt into that this bolt there's nothing to bolt into but if you keep that um, black nut from your stock plastic you cut off you can just bolt it on and you get the illusion that it's working just to fill in the hole looks great um, yeah and now we're gonna mount my exhaust finally finally we got it it is a Yoshimira it's from the loop exhaust for a Grom I took the muffler and I had Clint I'll have a link for him in the description he welded this up cut it welded it for me and so it's removable bolts on um, long story short I trusted someone else to do this and they almost scammed me but luckily I had never paid and I got my parts back thank God because that boy is expensive um, and then I sent these to Clint again link in description for him he'll he builds exhaust 
Um, final, so I had no one locally that could weld stainless steel. It was a nightmare. This was the last piece I was waiting for. Um, this is going to be a high mount. We're going to mount it right here. And I made a little makeshift bracket. And we're actually going to mount it into this screw hole here. Since the SFs don't have a high mount option, um, that's what I'm going to mount it on. So I will put this camera up and we will get this on. Install the wideband sensor for the AF1 and see what we're going to do next. So let's get going. This is a new exhaust gasket. I already have one in there, but when you're installing it, make sure you put a new one in. Got that in. I'm just going to zip tie this to the clutch line just so it's not really flapping around in the wind. There she is. Ah, oh, just love the carbon fiber. That's my little makeshift mount. Just a little space here and a bolt bolted in the factory location. Runs DAS, a Chimera header, which fitment was terrible. Um, it bolts to the factory exhaust mount location, but where Steady or Chimera welded this, it was off. Clint had to re weld it on, and then I had to bend it a little bit because it was hitting my swing arm. Uh, let's see, it tucks in there. That's one of the main reasons why I went with this header versus OEM is it tucks against the motor much tighter. Um, O2 sensor for the wideband, not in the most ideal location to me anyways. I wish I could have it a little bit farther down or even towards the back like the Hindles um, and it kind of hits the cylinder but should be fine. Zip tied it just to the clutch line. Everything else runs up inside. Yeah. I mean, this exhaust, I've never had a high mount on my Grom, but it looks fantastic. I'm going to save a racer setup and first ride and pretty much getting this thing to fir the first start um, for the next episode. This, ep this episode's probably ridiculously long, and I think it's, it's time to end it. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe. Do whatever, I don't really care. Oh, my A-Racer banner, where is it? There it is. My A-Racer banner I just hung up. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you that watch this. I hope my videos help you. And yeah, take care. <laughs>